I was born in a small town called Huntley, which is about half an hour north of Hamilton. When I was 16, I was an exchange student. I went to a place called Latvia, which is one of the Baltic nations that used to be part of Russia, which was a really good experience. I became able to accept the differences between people and um, all of those things, which was a really good thing. I came back to New Zealand and I finished secondary school and then went off to study travel, tourism and business. And that was here in Auckland. Uh, when I came here, I suddenly met people called Muslims and I had no idea about what they were, who they were, what they believed or anything like that. It was just like a foreign word. I'd never heard anything, not even on the TV. Um, so it was, I, I love to read. So the first thing was off to the library to see what these Muslim people believe. Um, so a lot of the information I got was from books at first because the Muslims that I met, they were not pressuring me. They didn't try to make me become Muslim. I was from the standpoint that I wanted to understand them and why they did things the way they did. I was Christian. Um, I've never prayed to Jesus Christ as, I've never believed that he actually was God. I've always prayed to God. Um, and I did find some parts of Christianity very hard to understand, but believed that I just had to have faith and believe that. But when I started reading about Islam, I felt that that was pretty much what I believed anyway, you know, in one God and the prophets and all of these things. Um, so I read probably every book I found. It would have been hundreds of books and um, I did meet a man who was Muslim, but he was not a reason for me to become Muslim. I decided that if I was going to become Muslim, it would be for me and only for me. Um, because as a Muslim man, you are allowed to be married to a woman of the book. So that means like Jews or Christians. So I didn't need to revert for him. Islam, for me, is a way of life. It's, it's everything. Um, once you become Muslim, Muslim is someone who submits to the will of Allah. Um, it's a whole lifestyle. Um, not, not to say that I wasn't who I was bef before, but everything in my life has changed. There's new reasons for everything. There's um, new ways of thinking. And it seems strange at first, when you first become Muslim, because you're wondering, why do these people want to help me? And they just want to help you because you're Muslim. And that just seems something wonderful. Um, and everywhere you go, there's sisters there to help, or even brothers there to help. So Alhamdulillah, that's really, really a good thing. <laughs> Oh, the status of woman is so high in Islam. I'm um, very upset when people say that they think that we're oppressed and all of these things. Because people just respect mothers so much in Islam that they have a special place and um, they are valued so much. Women in Islam are well protected. They have so many rights um, and all of these are decreed in, in um, the Quran. So it's not like a lawyer, you could just go change the bits and pieces and have it suit yourself. This is decreed, it's by Allah. So Allah is perfect, so these things are perfect. The, they protect women. It's, she has right to inheritance, she has right to divorce, she has rights to be maintained, she has you know, all of these rights, there are so many. Um, yeah, and a lot of them I would have never even thought about before I became Muslim or read the Quran or anything like that. That people could think 
so long ago about that, 1400 years ago, about these rights for women. Every time I see something on TV about Muslim women, I just sit and I wonder how they can how they can even comprehend that a Muslim woman is, is submissive or anything like that. I have never met a woman who is oppressed or anything like that. Most of them are so intelligent, so um, there is so much that they do that a lot of them are very professional women, doctors, lawyers, accountants. Um, and the women who do decide to stay home, they're really well respected. They're looked after and all of these things. It's not like in the, in the Western psyche, if you say, I'm just a mother, I, I feel offended when people say, you're just a mother, because it's the most important role. And I believe as Muslims, we are told that a mother needs to be respected because this is one of the most important things in life to look after your children and raise them well. For me, it removes a lot of the things that I used to be like. Um, I'm always, I was always checking to make sure that I look beautiful in that, but now it's like I cover and I, I'm doing that to please God and no one else. And suddenly, uh, God matters more than more than people people do. I don't have to spend like an hour before I go out <laughs> putting on my makeup and doing my hair and <laughs> making sure my clothes match each other and <laughs> all of those things. <laughs> um, yeah, I find that I'm respected more for what I have to say than how I look, which I think is a wonderful thing. I've never really felt it to be a barrier. Um, I don't say I can't get a job because I'm Muslim and I cover my hair and I'm so obviously like this. If I want a job, I'll, I'll apply for it and if they've got questions, I'll answer them um, the best I can. But it's not a barrier. I study, I work. Um, and people are becoming very understanding about being Muslim and and the way we dress. I don't see any conflicts between working and being Muslim. Uh, as long as my family is well looked after and I'm, I'm giving them, them their rights, I'm looking after my husband and my children and I have the right to work. Um, and one thing that it's surprising, people don't think about it, but women in Islam have the right to earn money so when I earn money, my husband doesn't say to me, we've got a power bill, give me the money. Um, he's like, well, you've earned this money, you, you, you spend it how you like. So if I do give it to the family to pay for, for things, for the family bills or anything, then that's my choice, but it's not expected from me. I don't run around slaving after my husband, actually. It's amazing what he does for me. And that the prophet, he used to do things around the house too. Most people would think, oh, he'd be sitting on his bum doing nothing. Um, those type of things, I think. Are, and also that I went to his country and I've come back. I wasn't locked in the, uh, in the garden shed and left there. <laughs> That's what they think if they saw that. <laughs> that I've never seen that that movie that they all talk about. But. <laughs>